really true wealth is built in cash flow. Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here and in this episode of uh, Jeff Koga Live and uh, we're going to talk about the next housing market report and is it the next real estate crash or is it the next real estate boom? Now, why did I decide to talk about uh, real estate market conditions once again is I got into a conversation today with another investor uh, talking about the current condition of where we're at and uh, for me, it's quite interesting when we start talking about real estate market cycles, right? And and you guys, if you guys are just hopping on hearing this for the first time, and I highly recommend for you to uh, look at both sides of the spectrum, okay? Meaning one, uh, understand and learn something about uh, what they call the 18-year uh, real estate cycle by uh, Cato Institute, where they talk about the next uh, boom is still ahead of us, and they talk about the 18-year real estate cycle. That's number one. Now the other flip side of the coin is you can talk about uh, you can actually read up and learn about uh, kind of the naysayers or let's just call it the bears of the next crash now regardless of what it is uh, here's a disclaimer here okay I'm a firm believer that no one truly knows when the next crash and or the next correction will happen um, if they did I think they would be geniuses all right but what you can do is you can play both sides to actually try to make money regardless of where you're currently at and depending on what where you're at in terms of your career, your life, your strategy is going to uh, differ uh, on what you're going to do. But a lot of my listeners here, um, you guys are in the real estate space for obvious reason, as well as a lot of them are in the space of real estate sales, okay? Meaning like what? You sell houses for a living. So what I'm about to talk to you about, it may actually impact you because remember if you're in the commission based business of selling houses all right you have a professional bias all right you have a cognitive bias called a professional bias where you're biased to the opinion of what's going on why is because your livelihood depends on it all right now you can argue with me and say hey you know what it doesn't it's not a, it, it's not impacted you're not impacted whatever it is but just know that you have a professional bias why is because if you believe you know um, that there's going to be a crash or something like that, then guess what? Then uh, you might feel uncomfortable selling a house to a homeowner uh, when they actually ask you, hey, is it a good time to buy? And and you might not be able to keep a straight, you know, straight face and be like, yeah, it's a great time to buy. When in reality, if you understand the market cycle, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, no, it's a terrible time to buy, right? So be aware of that. And then for some of the folks who might find this video, if you're a consumer and somehow magically you ended up here um, on this video or this audio, just know that what I'm about to tell you is literally conversations I have with investors and I've been investing in real estate since 2004 and I've seen the cycle of the crash and as well as the boom and here we are at 2017 and I want to talk about it because we got into another conversation about what what, what is going to happen and it all started because um, back in April, I got into conversation with an investor uh, about how uh, more and more homeowners are currently right now in and I'm talking about in the United States, okay? We hit a number one, I mean like we hit, we hit the same levels of homeowners actually pulling out money from their house, okay? As in like using their house as an ATM machine, okay? The same levels as 2006. Right now, we know what happened about 18 months after 2006, right? The whole market started crashing down. Now, last year in December, all right, the rate at which car loans started to default and they hit what 2006 levels so if you look at those two charts right you might you can convince yourself it says ooh you know what it's inevitable we're gonna see a correction or we're gonna see a crash and that could happen right but I'm telling you this that you have to be aware of this so if you're in Southern California you want to learn about housing market report okay I highly recommend for you to go to uh, drhousingbubble.com check it out and uh, read kind of like the bears on there okay so there's tons of bears on there blogger of uh, dr. housing bubble is basically a, a huge bear he just talks about how homes in Southern California are way overpriced and we need to see a ginormous crash so that way more people can become homeowners right but what I recommend is go read 
read that blog, but also at the same time, go read the comments and you'll be able to learn a lot of the stuff uh, on what regular mainstream media isn't talking about in terms of the real estate space, especially at the local level of like the state of California, uh, in this case, Southern California, okay? And you can learn a lot about it. And I'm actually a, a contributor in the, the comment section. I'm frequently on there actually commenting on there, okay? Now, I for one, I am very bullish about the real estate market, all right? And uh, not because of the fact that I'm an investor and I'm in it, okay? But in the fact that as long as there's not a black swan event, now, you hear me say this term black swan event over and over again. Now, what is a black swan event? A black swan event is something that we don't know that it was gonna happen, all right? Just like, hey, we go full on blown World War III or something like that, right? That, that can be a black swan event that's going to affect the global economy and it's going to affect the United States, all right? But what's going on currently right now is if you just remove the black swan event because no one knows you know a black swan event is gonna happen but if you just look at what's going on in terms of the equities market and then you look at the real estate market as well and when I say the equities market this is the stock market all right like where the S&P 500 the Dow's right it's a stock market it's at an all-time high still and we're hovering around the 20,000 mark Okay? Same thing as real estate, right? Certain places has hit 2006 levels, right? They have, some areas they have it, all right? But um, mo most of the areas across the nation, we've seen an increase in the last quarter and uh, uh, home prices are at a high, all right? So if you look at those two things alone, the equities market and you look at the real estate market, fundamentally, you gotta be like, okay, what's gonna happen? now? One asset class, and when I say asset class, it's like, hey, the equities market is an asset class, the real estate market is an asset class, okay? Because there, one is a tangible product like a house, and then the other one is a paper, uh, as in like you're owning ownership of a stock, okay? So again, these are two different asset classes, and we need one asset class to continuously rise. We just need it, okay, in our country. It just happens to be, we're in a, bubble economy, meaning like, hey, we get out of bubbles. And uh, I'm a believer that the equity market can actually turn, right? It can go down, I think, significantly more, especially in the tech world, if that busts. If the tech world busts, then guess what? The big money has somehow has to figure out where to place that money, right? You gotta figure out where. Because again, if one asset class is, goes down in value, then you have to place your money somewhere. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna stay in cash position? But you're gonna have to place it somewhere else. And that typically is gonna go into real estate. Now, if the real estate market goes down in value, where are they gonna put the cash? It can go into, guess what? The equities market, but it's a lot harder asset class to liquidate, meaning like for real estate, right? Regardless if it's commercial or if it's residential, it's not like a snap of a finger and then you can sell it and then you can get your cash out, you just can't. Versus like a stock market, you can just put a stop loss or just say, hey, hit the sell button and you can literally sell everything off, right? So again, those are some of the challenges that you have in certain asset classes, but what's interesting to me is really going in a conversation of, of what do you do? Right, because this is what we like to call in a marketplace a consolidation phase or or a stagflation phase. Right, meaning that the real estate market is going up basically at inflation rate. Right, meaning like two to three percent increase every single uh, every single year that it's going. Some prices are obviously a little bit higher. Some people are a little bit flat. But let's just say it's a three percent increase. Right, so it's flat. We're not seeing double digit you know returns or uh, double digit increases in real estate value. Right, we're just not now. Are there areas in around the country where you're actually seeing double digits? Hundred percent, yeah. Okay, but we're not seeing the double digits. So it's a flat market. All right, and the flat market is the most interesting market to me, is because this is where more and more people are going to start drawing the line in the sand, where they start saying, okay, well, it's going to crash, so I'm going to be on the sideline, and they don't do anything. Right, which is okay too. Okay, because hey, everyone has the right for their opinion. Now the other side is, you know, hey, people say, oh wow, it's gonna be a boom. And if it's gonna be a boom, these people are continuously going to buy. Now again, regardless of which camp that you're in, right, is, is this, is that some folks that I know of have bought in 2011 and they sold off their inventory in 2015. They unloaded, they bought much as they can in 2011 and they unloaded and they're sitting on tons of cash. 
right? I have friends like that that are currently doing that. Now, there I have other friends that are currently what? Buying uh, rental properties and or building rental properties, right? Like I have a good friend of mine in here in Southern California. He actually builds units, right? So he's a He's a general contractor, he's a broker, and I talked to him earlier this year. But even with someone like him, he says, I don't really know, but he says, hey, I'm in it for cash flow. And it's really true, right? Because you can flip houses, but really the true wealth in real estate is actually what? Buying something and renting it out, and then paying down the debt, okay? Paying down the debt, and then having a free and clear property that cash flows for you. That's where the true wealth is, and those things are a, you know, five-year game plan, seven-year game plan, 10-year game plan, whatever it is that, you know, what type of game plan you have, but it's a long-term game plan, right? And I'm not talking from a place of, of saying, oh, look at me and pounding my chest and says, yeah, I did everything right. No, if anything, I probably did a lot of things wrong in terms of what I've done in terms of investing in real estate because truly, when, when people think of investing in real estate, it's really for cash flow, right? If you're doing investing strategies for like even in the stock market or equities market and you're like doing swing trading, right? And or you're day trading, right? These are capital growth strategies. And when I say capital growth strategies, it's to actually what? Get big chunks of cash, okay? But really true wealth is built in cash flow. Yeah, so last year a company called Point.com uh, raised uh, uh, $8 million and uh, um, their business model is quite interesting, which is they will give you a literally a second loan, a second, like a HELOC against it, right? Not even a HELOC, I'm sorry. Hey, they'll give you a second mortgage against your property and uh, you don't have to make payments to it. But in exchange, you have to give them ownership of the house, a percentage. And uh, you don't have to make a payment. Now, you do have to pay them back within 10 years. So it's like a 10-year arm, pretty much, right? Adjustable rate mortgage or a 10-year balloon, pretty much. I'm sorry, a 10-year balloon uh, payment that you have to do 10 years later. So either you have to refinance and or you have to guess what? Sell the house. And if they, if you sell the house, then they get paid off, right? So, so an uh, interesting conversation with a banker that I had, which was that they think that they're using that to create a new security. Right, which is imagine someone gives you a uh, loan, okay, and uh, with that you partner up with a company that's going to go ahead and be part owners of a house, and they're going to give you maybe some money for down payment assistance or whatever it is, okay. Now, <laughs> I don't know if that'll fly or not, but literally, if you have that and you have ownership of the house, right, the issue is with when it comes to foreclosing a house, right, um, there's a certain laws and regulation. It's all regu you know, regulated under like state, right? Because real estate is controlled by the state. But if you own the actual part of it, it's kind of like a bad partnership. And all you have to do is just literally sue the other person to get them out, right? And so so the banker that I talked to, he believes that, that they're going to create a new security and possibly use that kind of as a new bond and sell in the secondary market. Right, it's a 10 year bond that they have because they have to pay the actual loan off in 10 years, and then that's when they get cashed out. Right, so they can tell, tell an investor and say, Hey, you want to get some real estate bond, and this yield is going to be X amount of percentage based on current asset value and the ownership that they have in the real estate. Okay, so that's what we think that's going to happen. But until that happens, I we're not we're, we are in a bubble, but we're not at like hysteria type of prices, in my opinion. Yes, is it overpriced? Yes, is it unreasonable? Yes, but there's still people on the sideline. So again, look at both sides and decide which one you want to do and figure out how you can participate or not participate. And that's what I got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. Leave a comment somewhere around here. And uh, that's what I got. Take care and bye-bye.